We, we really want you to be blessed. Our prayer is always that you are totally and richly blessed when you are here. We love you. We care about you. The reason we do this is because we want to serve God, but also we want people blessed and encouraged. So why don't you just uh, close your eyes for a moment because we don't want distractions around us. And why don't, you wish, why don't we just zero in on God with our hearts and our minds. I want to pray for you. And, I, and trust me, this is a heartfelt prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you allow me to be a minister of your word. It is a great honor and a great privilege to serve you. To pray for those that are here is also one of those privileges that you allow us to have as Christians and believers. And so as a believer and as a Christian, I pray for my sisters and my brothers in this room. I pray, Father God, that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them. I pray that today, Heavenly Father, as we minister your word, that not just a word that comes from my mouth that you've put in my heart to speak, but also, Heavenly Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to them about things that they've been looking and been asking you about. So they'd hear my words, but even more important than that, they'd hear you. Bless them, Heavenly Father. Bless them, bless them. Let your peace be upon them. Let your strength flow into each and every one of them. Now, as I'm praying, if anybody has somebody they're standing for that needs healing, just raise your hand. We're going to pray for those. And Heavenly Father, I would just pray for those here in this room that need healing. And we pray for those who we're raising our hand for. We ask, Father God, that you would do a miraculous miracle in their lives. We ask, Father God, that you would lead, guide, and direct them in what they should do, what they should not do, what kind of attention they should receive from doctors or medicine or anyone else. We ask, Father God, that you work with what they're getting involved in and heal them, strengthen them, bless them, and bring them off the bed of affliction. And we thank you, Father God, it is done in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Uh, sometimes we go through situations in our lives and challenges in our lives, and we want you to know that we're going to speak to you today. If you're going through a challenge or, or you're trying to stand for something, and you're just about ready to throw on the towel, or you've been wondering, is it ever going to happen? Uh, today we're going to talk to you because today's sermon is uh, don't quit, don't run away. Resist, and you'll receive your reward. Don't quit. Don't run away. Those are the things we, we sometimes do. Sometimes we, we look, where's so-and-so? They ran away. They, they went to hide. Uh, sometimes we want to run away ourselves and get away and hide. We had someone on staff uh, one time, and I was talking to him, and he said, there's times I just want to go hide in the woods all by myself and, and get away and maybe never come back, just live there. And, and I said, yeah, that's a nice place to get away too, but then you have to come back and, and, and beat the devil up. Amen? So, so don't, don't quit. If you're facing a tough situation, everything in you makes you want to quit believing God for that miracle, believing God that you'll ever reach your goal, believing God that you'll ever fulfill that mission, uh, uh, don't quit. Don't run away. Resist and uh, receive your reward. Uh, you know, the scripture we're going to, to look at, it would be our main text today. We'll be definitely looking at other scriptures, but Galatians 6, 9 uh, they'll have it on the overhead. It says, let us not uh, be weary in well-doing. Now, when it says don't be weary in well-doing, it's possible that you can get weary. That's why the apostle is writing this by the Spirit of God. He's saying it is very possible that you can get weary when you're trying to stand and trying to believe or you're, 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 you're really trying to reach a goal in your life. You can, in fact, be weary. And that's why the apostle says, let us not be weary because he's saying it's a decision that you and I can make. We can make a decision that I am not going to be weary. And notice what he says, let us not be weary in well-doing. The word well-doing there uh, can also be looked at like this, let us not be weary in sowing good seed. Let us not be weary in doing the right things. See, it's very easy and very possible when things start happening that you didn't think was going to happen to quit sowing seed. It's very possible to, to quit doing good things. It's possible to quit and give up on God. Uh, the God's Word knows that, and that's why God says, let us not be weary in well-doing, in seed sowing, in doing the right thing, and, and, and sowing the right seed. Remember, the Word of God says, uh, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So you should always be sowing seed. 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 So it says, let us not be weary in sowing seed. 
For in due season you'll reap if you faint not. That, again, it tells you it's very easy to faint. There's times you just want to throw in the towel and give up. You're trying to get that business going. You're trying to get this marriage to work. You're trying to get that child on track. You're trying and you're, you're trying your hardest to get that ministry off, of, off the ground. You're trying to build it back up. And you just want to give up at times. Uh, don't be weary in well-doing sowing seed. For in due season uh, you'll reap if you don't faint. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't run away. Resist that temptation and you'll receive your reward. Turn to somebody and say, don't give up. In the honor of Anna being here, turn to somebody and say, don't give up, Anna. (laughs) Hold on to your dreams. Keep heading towards your, your goal. Don't give up on your purpose. God has a purpose for each one of us. God has a reason that he placed you here on this earth. You say, I don't know my purpose. I don't know my reason, or I thought I did know it, but now I'm not sure. God still knows it. God is still sure. God can still reveal it to you. You still have a call in your life. You say, well, I'm getting older. Uh, there's guys in the Bible that were much older than any of us here in this room, and so we can still do some great things for God. Amen? Amen. Challenges will come your way. I guarantee you. That's what the Bible tells us. Challenges will come. And the challenge will tell you, the challenges will tell you to quit. The challenges will tell you to back off. The challenges will tell you to quit dreaming. The challenges will tell you to quit believing. The challenges will try to get you to turn your back and walk away and give up on God. But God says, don't quit. Don't run away. Resist that temptation and you'll receive your reward. Amen? Amen. Turn to somebody and say, I'm not quitting. And I'm not running. Unless for exercise. The first point today is simply this. Satan wants to stop you. There's an enemy in the world, in the spiritual realm, that wants to stop you. People say, do you really believe there's a devil? Yeah, I do. Uh, Right here in this room right now, there are radio signals going through this room, but you don't see them, but they're here. And if you had a receiver, you could pick up and hear a channel or two or three or four. In, even in this room, even with the bricks and all that, if you have the right antenna, you can pick up a TV a signal, and all of a sudden you don't see the TV signal, but it's here. And you can receive it and watch a TV program on your TV. Just like that, there's a spiritual world. There's God, there's the angels, there's Satan, there's the demons. There is a spiritual world. So do I believe there's a devil? Well, I believe what the Bible says, and the Bible says there is a devil, so yes, I believe there's a devil. In fact, uh, let me tell you what the Bible says. It's, it's pretty clear. You know, when you go to the Word of God, the Word of God doesn't beat around the bush. In some churches, they say, don't talk about the devil. In some places now, even in uh, religious universities, they say, oh, there's not really a devil. Well, the Bible says this in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary is letting us know we have an adversary, the devil. Everybody say, the devil. And don't look at the person next to you when you say that. <laughs> be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. There is an enemy who wants to devour you. There is an enemy, enemy that wants to stop you from reaching your goals. There is an enemy that wants to tell you you don't really have a purpose for your life. There's an enemy that wants to tell you to give up, lay down, and, and, and give up on any goal or dream that you've ever had. But, you know, it's just not true. The devil is real, and he's trying to lie to you. The Bible says he's a, the, the liar and the father of lies. It's Jesus Christ tells us. In fact, if you study the Bible... Jesus tells us more about the devil than anywhere else in the whole Bible. So really and truly, uh, yes, there is a devil because Jesus told us so. The Bible tells us so. God lets us know that. You know, just the other day, I don't know if you saw it on the news or not, but in Alaska, in a government meeting, one of the officials ended their prayer or her prayer by saying, Hail Satan. It's amazing. People in church say, oh, there's not a devil, but people in the world worship the devil. In Florida, in Pensacola, Florida, in 2016, in a city council meeting that they were having there, they had a prayer there. It was a satanic prayer that was prayed. The Bible warns us about that kind of thing increasing as Jesus Christ gets closer and closer to returning. He says, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from 
from the faith giving heeds to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible lets us know there is a devil. Jesus Christ tells us there is a devil. And now we have people in public meetings praising and praying to the devil. And we in church go, is there really a devil? Well, if we had our receptor on, we could pick him up. But to be honest with you, I'd rather just reject him and get him out of here. But is there a devil? Well, in the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us that there was a woman there who was tempted by the devil. And she decided not to resist the devil. She resisted God. And she put her faith in the devil. Oh, there is a devil. The devil messed up the whole world because of that woman's decision. Uh, there was another man walking on the face of this earth. They called his name Jesus. You might have heard about him. And he's walking through the wilderness and the devil. Everybody say the devil. The Bible tells us there is a devil, a person that's trying to hurt you, harm you, destroy your visions, your dreams, trying to get you to give up, trying to get you to run away, is the devil. Jesus walked out into the wilderness. Jesus had a mission in his life, and the devil came trying to get him to quit, trying to get him to run away, trying to get Jesus to give up on the vision and the dream that God had given him. And Jesus says, no, Eve accepted you and rejected God. I reject you, and I accept God. Turn to somebody and say, I'm accepting God. I believe the Bible. So the first point today is simply this. Satan wants to stop you. He wants to hurt you. He wants to harm you. He doesn't want you to achieve your dreams. He doesn't want you to reach your goals. He doesn't want you to fulfill the mission that God has given you. He doesn't want you to accomplish the purpose that God has placed in your life. In fact, in John chapter 10, verse 10, we read this often, but maybe we should always make sure we say, this is Jesus Christ saying this. And he says, the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy. He's talking about the devil. This is Jesus Christ, not a shame. If we had a church meeting and Jesus Christ in the flesh was here, he would have no problem telling you there's a devil. He would tell you he's the enemy. He would say that he himself was tempted in the wilderness. He would tell you the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill and destroy, but I have come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. See, Satan doesn't want you happy Satan doesn't want those whose lives you will bless if you fulfill your mission and your dream in your life. He doesn't want you happy. He doesn't want those who you will bless and will be blessed if you fulfill your mission. He doesn't want them happy. And he certainly doesn't want God happy. He doesn't want you to reap from the seeds that you've been planting. So yeah, there's a devil and he wants to stop you. He wants to harm you because he knows if he stops you, he doesn't just stop you. He, he stops those who would be blessed by what God wants you to do. He'll stop them from being blessed. Don't give up. Not just don't give up for you, but don't give up for those whose lives you'll touch. You say, I don't know if I'll touch any lives. God doesn't have a purpose for you just for you. God has a purpose for us for others. Amen? Amen. Turn to somebody and say, I may be uh, wanting to bless you. Point two is simply this. Your job is to resist. Satan's job, and he takes it seriously, is to destroy your life, to destroy your dreams, to stop you from fulfilling your mission. He wants to stop you. He wants to destroy you. Now, your job, his job is to do that, but your job is to resist the devil. Now, some would say, well, there's not a devil, and you, you don't even know you ought to resist him. But we need to know there is one, and we need to resist the devil. The Bible over in James chapter 4, verse 7 says, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's important that we know the Bible tells us that we need to take a proactive stand, that we are resisting the devil. We're not allowing him to get by us. He's not, we're not allowing him to get us to stop. We're not allowing him to get us to run. We're not allowing him to give us, get us to give up on our dreams or our goals or our visions. We're not going to allow that. We're going to resist that temptation. And the Bible makes a promise. Listen to the promise he gives. He says, uh, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, the original Greek says, flee in terror. So he will actually turn around and run from you. There's so many who don't know they can resist the devil. And the devil beats up a lot of churchgoers, a lot of believers, a lot of Christians. And he beats them up and beats them up and beats them up. And they cave in and give in and give up. And so he's happy. He's not used to those who will stand the ground and look them eyeball to eyeball and say, thus saith God. He's not used to those who would take on Jesus' stance and say, the word of God says this, and I'm believing God, get away from me. He's used to those Eves who will say, go along, or those Adams that will go along. He's not used to a bunch of Jesuses that will stand up and say, no, 
I'm going to fulfill the will of God. So he, he, he's not happy. But our job is to resist the devil. Your job is to resist the devil. And when he finds somebody who actually resists him, listen to me now. A man of God, I heard years ago say this, and I thought, I don't know. But he knew what he was talking about. He lived a powerful life. He touched so many people's lives. He had satellites. He had television. He had radio around the world. And he touched millions of people's lives. He still is doing it. And he said this. He said, resist the devil. You can resist the devil. And he is afraid of those who actually know they have the power to do that. I want you to say this. I can resist the devil. I can resist the devil. And he will flee from me. This man of God said this to me. He said, you know, Tim, what happens is when you resist the devil, he runs from you because he's not used to having to face someone like that. So he'll run to somebody who doesn't know they can stand. And he'll run away from you. He's scared of those who really believe and really know they can stand up against him. And when you know that, you can stand up and he'll run from you. God wants you to stand. Amen? Amen. See, as you stand and you resist the devil, you'll be rewarded. Now, the way you'll be rewarded is this way. You, your own life, will be rewarded, and you'll be blessed. But also, those whose lives lives you were sent here on this earth and placed here at this time to touch will be touched. When you resist the devil, you may be resisting him, you think, possibly just for you. But you actually might be resisting him for your child or your grandchildren or your mom or your dad or your uncle or your aunt or your neighbor or that co-worker or the teen ministry or the children in the children's ministry. When you resist the devil, when you resist him, he tells you to quit, tells you to run away. And you resist him. You say, I'm not quitting. I'm not running away. You may be blessing a whole lot of people. The devil knows that and he wants you to quit because of that. Uh, Now, I want to point three is simply this, and we need to know this. We need to understand this. Satan brings storms uh, to get us to quit and run away. Satan will bring storms into your life to get you to quit and to run away. You say, why is this happening to me? I'm a believer. Well, you don't have to put up with it, but the reason it's there is to get you to quit and to run away. Remember that. Satan brings storms into people's lives. He tries to bring storms into your life to get you to quit and run away. Why is this happening to me? Well, you can get through it. Don't worry. You can overcome the storm. You can get some peace. Don't worry. You're going to be an overcomer. Don't worry. But I want you to know Satan brings storms into your life, into my life, because he's trying to get us to quit. We just need to have no quitting sense. Amen? Amen. See, Satan knows he, he, he senses this. He's, he's been around for a long, long time. And he senses and says, you are going to be blessed and you're going to bless others. So I need to stop you and I need to stop those who are going to be blessed because of you. So he senses that and he tries to bring a storm into your life. Now again, you're an overcomer. You can resist it. You can overcome it. But why are storms coming in people's lives? Because Satan wants to get you off track. Satan doesn't want you blessed. And he doesn't just not want you blessed. He doesn't want those whose lives you're going to bless as you fulfill your dream. Amen? See, he senses there that something or someone's going to get blessed. He senses that you're, something good is going to happen to you and something good is going to happen through you. And so he'll bring a storm to try to stop you. He senses that. He he wants you to stop praying. He wants you to stop attending church. He wants you to stop giving to a church. He wants you to stop doing things. Oh, I'm going to give up this. I'm going to give up that. I'm going to give up this. I'm going to stop doing that. He wants you to stop submitting to God. He wants you to stop believing that the dream can still happen. He wants you to pull back. I need a little time off. Oh, yeah, and that time off is when the devil will beat you from pillar to post. He's aware that something good is about ready to happen to you and to happen through you. But listen to what else he's aware of, and this is what really scares him. He's aware that something bad is going to happen to him and in his kingdom. He doesn't like that. We're going to reach into his kingdom and pull people out of his kingdom. We're going to touch and bless people, pull them out of his kingdom, and bring them into the kingdom of God. Amen? So he doesn't like that. He brings brings storms. Satan wants to stop you. Why? 
He doesn't want you blessed, and he doesn't want those blessed who you're going to bless when you fulfill that mission, that dream. If it's a business, you're employing people. If it's a ministry, you're blessing people. If it's a prayer uh, session you have, and you have it over, if it's a team ministry, you're going to be blessing someone else. It's not just about you. And Satan doesn't like that, so he'll do everything he can. Now, Jesus is our example. So we're going to use an example. I'm going to show you what happened, and then we're going to show you how Satan tried to stop it from happening. All right? First of all, Jesus went about doing good and fulfilling his mission. He was teaching. He was blessing. He was healing. We know that in the Bible. He, he taught. He healed. He blessed. Uh, he went around fulfilling the mission that God had given him, and we should do the same thing. Satan tried to get him to stop. Remember the different times Satan tried to get him to stop in the wilderness? There's a, the temptation over and over. Three different temptations we know Jesus went through. He's there 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, three of the temptations are recorded in the Bible. It says he, re, he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, three of those temptations are recorded in the Bible. And Jesus stood during all that time. Uh, Satan tried to get him to give up, but he continued to do what God called him to do. Told Satan to get behind my back. You shut up, you little rascal. And then when Jesus was about ready to go to the cross, Satan tried to get him to give up again. And S Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. I'm going to do what God wants me to do, not what Satan's trying to tell me to do. Uh, so we ought to be like Jesus, amen? So Jesus went about doing good. And he, he, that's how you and I should. We should go about fulfilling our mission, whatever it is. Just go about doing it. Now, Jesus didn't just go about doing good. We're going to show you. He set a, 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 a demonic man free. Now, Jesus went around and set a demonic man free. Now, what does that mean? You know, the church today, not all the church, there's great ministers and great churches. I don't want to make it sound like everyone's bad. I, I just part of the church is that they... they they go, oh, no, we don't believe in devils. No, people can't be demon-possessed. The Bible says they can be. The Bible says there is a devil. The Bible says they are demons. The Bible says it. The Bible makes it very clear. And they go, oh, no, that was just, you know, because they talked like that back then, but they didn't really understand. My friend, I've been in a room with, with an individual that was demon-possessed so strongly that my skin crawled. I wanted to run out of the room. That was the most powerful time I've ever been in a room with somebody who was like that and full of the devil. Now, I know there's a devil. My friend, the Bible tells us the devil. We don't need to just in our own flesh know it. We have to know it because the Bible tells us there are those who can be demon-possessed. There are those who can, can have a demon running their lives. Have you ever wondered if your mother-in-law, no, I mean, anyway. <laughs> Jesus set the demonic man free, which is part of his mission. Now, I want you to think about this. Jesus had a mission. When he's in the wilderness, Satan was trying to stop him. Jesus kept going forward. Now Jesus comes and says a demonic. That means someone who's full of an evil spirit. It says that this spirit actually talked to Jesus and said, I am legion. Now a legion could be anywhere between 4,000 to 6,000. Uh, so we, we, we don't know. But it's very possible there are 4,000 spirits in this one man. Let me read to you from Mark chapter 5, verse 1. I'm just going to read through verse 5 for a moment. It says, and they came over. He's talking about uh, Jesus and his disciples. They had a mission. It says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man. Now listen to this with an unclean spirit, who his dwelling uh, was among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not by chains, because that he had before often been bound with fetters and with chains, and the chains had been uh, uh, plucked asunder. He just broke them uh, by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Another, uh, neither could uh, keep this man. And then verse 5 says, and always, night and day. Now listen to me. There are those in the world that are in torment. They might not know what's tormenting them, but we do. They may be in misery thinking about taking their own lives. They may be hurting so bad that doctors can't figure out why they are hurting, why they mentally or emotionally are so distraught. There are those who actually cut themselves. I've had several in my office, uh, we had to help them get delivered from that, who would cut themselves, mutilate their own body. You can get them delivered, but that ain't God. That ain't right. 
And that's what happened to this man. Afterwards, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. It goes on to say when he saw Jesus, he ran to Jesus. And the end of the story is Jesus set him free. Jesus had a mission. Had Jesus given up when he was in the wilderness and, Jesus, and Satan was tempting him, that man would not have been delivered. Had Jesus given up when, G, uh, when Satan tempted him, you and I would not be able to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. See, somebody is waiting for you to fulfill that mission. And Satan's trying to get you to stop. Satan's trying to get you to run away. Satan's trying to get you to throw in the towel. Satan's get, w- trying to get you to not fulfill your mission because he knows something bad's going to happen to his kingdom and something good's going to happen to you and those whose lives you're going to touch. He doesn't like that. He, he, he works on a, a principle of fear and intimidation. He wants to intimidate you and scare you and tell you you can't handle this. You'll never get free of this. You might as well just give up. Uh, d- don't believe God. You'll never make it. Be fearful. Uh, you, you think you're going to get healed? It ain't, it's not going to work. You think you're going to accomplish that task? No, you're not. And you get so fearful, you say, it's better just to give up. Don't give up. God's on your side. Amen? Amen. Now, when Jesus set that demonic free, Jesus was happy. The demonic man who had been set free, he was happy. And guess what? God was happy. The devil wasn't happy. Now, before that took place, and this is important. This is why I did it this way. We want to see. There is a Satan, and he's wanting to stop you. Jesus went around doing his mission, what he's supposed to do. And Jesus set free a demonic, a man that was full of demons. Demons. And we learn from this something. Satan tries to stop us. But now watch. Before Jesus even delivered the demonic, remember Jesus is on this side of the lake, and he tells his disciples, we're going to go to the other side. And they get in a boat, and they go to the other side of the lake. Maybe you've been standing here one time in your life and saw that God wanted you to accomplish something. And so you were going to do it, and as you started to cross, it all broke loose. A storm broke in your life. Things came against you. And we're going to see in a moment that's what happened to Jesus. Jesus knew the demonic was on the other side. He understood he had a mission over there. He understood that person needed to be delivered. He knew that that guy had to be set free. Because that guy, by the way, being set free, brought revival to that land. Uh, That guy wanted to go with Jesus when he left. Jesus said, no, you stay here and be a missionary. And that guy brought revival to that land. And so Jesus knew he had to get over there for the kingdom of God. And Satan wanted to stop him. So Satan brought a storm into his life to try to stop him from getting to the mission or fulfilling the mission that God had for him. Satan does the same thing to us. He he senses something, and he sees us heading to do something that's going to bless us and bless others, and he's going to try to stop you. He's going to try to get you to quit. He's going to try to get you to throw in the towel, and he did it to Jesus. Uh, Jesus, uh, or Satan brought a storm uh, and tried to stop Jesus. He brought a storm and tried to stop Jesus. He's going to do the same to you and me. Why is this happening? Why? Because that's how he works. Our job is not to acknowledge and say, oh, he's powerful. Our job is to resist him and win. Amen? Amen. This is what it says in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over. This is Jesus Christ saying, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was into the ship, saying they took Jesus into the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And then verse uh, 37. I want you to really pay attention to verse 37 on the overhead or in your Bibles or on your iPads or your your iPhones, however you're doing it. Watch, these words are very important. Now Jesus is saying we're going to go over to the other side. You and I know he's going to go over there to deliver a demoniac that's going to become a missionary and touch that whole land for the kingdom of God. You know that and I know that. Nobody else knew that. Jesus knew that. Sometimes God has a mission for you that you know there's a mission, but you don't know the whole purpose. God knows the purpose. Amen? It says in verse 37, And there arose, there arose, when you look that word up, it says unexpected, caught off guard. So here Jesus is jumping in with his apostles, and there arose unexpected, 
caught them off guard. They weren't thinking there was going to be a storm. They were fishermen. They knew what they were doing. They looked at the sky. They jumped in the boat. An unexpected, caught off guard and surprised. Have you ever tried to do something for God and got caught off guard by an attack, surprised by an attack that came your way? Something happened you never thought would happen? Well, join the club or jump in the boat with Jesus and his disciples. And there arose a great storm. Great. When you look that up, we, we think great. Oh, it's a, kind of a big storm. It, the original language is interpreted this way, a massive storm, a mega storm, a huge storm. It's trying to let us know in the Bible that here Jesus was heading over to fulfill his purpose, and a unexpected, didn't expect it, a huge, massive Mega storms started coming against him. Have you ever felt like, where did this thing, where did this thing come from? Why did all this break loose against me? Well, listen, you're going to win the thing. I'm just letting you know what's happening. Jesus won the thing, but it goes on. It says, great storm. There arose unexpectedly again a massive, mega, huge storm of wind. And the wind, when you look it up, it's talking about a hurricane or a cyclone. That's how powerful of a storm this was. When you look at back in the original Greek language, it's trying to tell us that it's one of the biggest, most powerful storms that that region had ever seen. It was a, a cyclone. It was a hurricane of volume. It was a great wind, it says. It was huge. It was massive. It was mega. It was terrible. It was violent. It was a hurricane coming against Jesus to try to stop Jesus from getting to that demoniac that needed set free so he could also bring revival to that land. He was trying to stop Jesus. Satan, we know, knew that something good was going to happen, and he wanted to stop it. He knew something bad was about to happen to his kingdom, so he was trying to stop it from happening. Jesus, point number seven, Jesus did not quit. He did not run. He resisted, and he reigned, and he was rewarded. It's a simple lesson today, but it's a powerful lesson we all need to know, and that is simply this. There are people that need blessed. There's things that need to be done for the kingdom of God. We don't always know when God tells us, go there, why? Do this, why? We're not always aware of all the lives that will be touched we don't, you know, you take a pebble and you, you, you drop it in water and there's a ripple effect. And all your job was to drop the pebble, but all the ripples just happened. In our lives, when we do what God has asked us to do, all we know to do is do this. And God knows how many lives, how many things will be touched because we did this. And Satan has a sense that something's going to happen, so he tries to stop us. Don't drop the pebble. Don't, don't do it. Don't, stop, stop, stop. I say drop it. Continue to drop it. Continue to do it. And let the ripples go and let people be blessed. Amen? Amen. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Keep going for it. Uh, in Mark chapter uh, 4, verse uh, uh, 39, it says, And he arose and rebuked the storm and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Uh, he, re he resisted. Now, now, I want to talk to you for a moment. I drive into my driveway. I've told you this before. I drive into the driveway of my house. David, you remember where my house is, don't you? David used to be uh, working in the maintenance ministry, and uh, over by my house, we had, we had a building over there at one time, early on before I was a pastor. David was working in the maintenance ministry, and there's always a problem with the water. Oh, he loved that place, didn't you, David? <laughs> It was always a problem. It was just one of those things you just, you just didn't like. You didn't like to be involved in it. But God had plans for us, and God has plans for you. And God doesn't want you to give up. See that we went on, and we went on, and we went on. Sometimes we think all we can do is get beat up. When I say resist, I'm not talking about just stand there and take it. No, I'm not saying just stand there and let the devil beat you up. That's not how we resist. That's how some people think you resist. No, 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 that's not how you resist. The way you resist is like Jesus resisted. Remember in the wilderness, Jesus said, it is written. 
he attacked back. The Word of God says the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. It's the sword. That's how you attack Satan back. It doesn't mean just stand there and take it. No, no, it means attack back, Jack. Amen? That's what it means. It means attack back Jack. And that's what he's really saying. And so what Jesus did is he's going, I need to get over there to demoniac. And a massive, huge hurricane, windstorm hits, his, hits him. It's like it's hit your life and tried to get you to give up and get you to throw in the towel and get people not to be blessed because if you get that business not to happen, get that marriage to fall apart, get those kids to go to hell, get everything to mess up. And, and, and we sit there going, I don't know what's happening. And Jesus says, no, speak to the thing. Talk to the thing. Jesus stood up and said, peace. That's how he resisted. He resisted by speaking in the wilderness. When Satan got him, he said, it is written. That's how he resisted. And in he, he's on the Sea of Galilee. How did he resist? By he spoke. See, we say, stop it. I'm in my driveway. I'm sitting there, and, I'll, and I'm thinking about, oh, the refrigerator went out. Oh, the car's acting up. Oh, this is going on. Oh, the church is, oh, this. And all of a sudden, I go, I'm under attack. It's like, ding. I'm under attack. You know, until that moment, I, didn't, I was handling this, I was handling that, but I didn't realize I was under attack. And sometimes in our lives, it takes a meeting like this to get us to understand we've been under attack. Now, that's point number one, but point number two is handle the attack. I said that, I go, God, I, I did, I go, God, I'm under attack. I, I didn't hear God say it, but I could almost hear him say, duh, yeah. All these things were happening, but I was, helping, I was handling this little thing, this little thing, and this little thing. And I realized I was under attack. And I said, God, how do I handle it? And in my heart, I said, you know, you preach. Why don't you do what you preach? I'm supposed to speak to the mountain. Jesus told the storm. Jesus cast a demon out. I've been given the name of Jesus. So in that driveway that day, that night, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the attack to cease and to stop now. You were able to get away with it because I didn't see it. I didn't catch it. But now I see it. I know where this storm has come from. And I command you to cease and to stop this now in the name of Jesus. Uh, what I was doing is I was resisting. And do you know it was like two days later, everything started, everything, it was like everything was cleared up. It was like a storm had just passed, this massive, huge hurricane that had come against our lives. Leanne and I, what is going on? Well, you know, this person in that situation, that. What? It's time to resist, not whine. It's time to resist, not cry. It's time to resist in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus shows us peace. Be still. And what that really means is some people say, what is exact? Well, what it means is like this Shut up, Satan. Sit down and go over there. Sit in your corner. Or get thou behind me. I have a mission to fulfill. I have a task that God wants me to do. And you're trying to get me to quit and run, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to resist in the name of Jesus. Amen. Maybe there's an attack on your life, and maybe you've been ready to give up. Maybe you've been ready to throw the towel, and maybe you've been ready to give up on your on your dream. Maybe it was clear one time and it's been kind of foggy. And maybe he's caused such a storm in your life that it's hard to even see what the dream was or what your purpose is. I've got some bad news and good news. The bad news is you're under attack. He's trying to stop you. He doesn't want you to have good things happen in your life. He doesn't want God happy, you happy, or the people whose lives you're going to touch happy. That's the bad news. The good news is you have the power to resist. You have the one who won in the inside of you. You have the one who won saying you could use his name. So today, let's just sit in the uh, driveway right across by the church where David had to handle the water problem. Let's just sit in the driveway together for a moment. Let's quiet everything down. Have you been under attack? Not, you don't have to answer it to me. Are things coming against you? Have you just about said, you know what? I thought I was supposed to be used of God, but I guess not. I thought I had a mission, but I, maybe I don't. 
Maybe it's a business thing. Maybe it's a marriage you're so tempted to give up on right now. Whatever it is, we showed you today in the Word of God there is an adversary. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. It's not time to quit. There's people that need you. There's people on the other side of the lake, on the other side of the task that's waiting for you to get there and bless them. Yes, if you feel you're under attack, if you see it clearly right now, we are talking about it here today so we can stop it. Not to glorify Satan, not to glorify the deal, not to glorify the storm, but to glorify God. We're going to walk through a confession. Remember, Jesus in the wilderness spoke to Satan. The attack stopped. Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, when there was a massive, huge hurricane force wind, Waves were all over the place. The disciples who were fishermen were ready to just give up. They didn't know what to do. Jesus rose up and told us what to do. Sometimes when I look around right now at Good News Church, I go, Lord, where's the building? I know there's a building on the other side of the lake. And I know he won't, the enemy wants to stop us inner fighting, not believing, whatever it is. It's time to speak to that storm and speak to our enemy because he knows on the other side of this lake for Good News Church, people will be blessed and will be blessed. Amen? For the church and for you personally, we're talking today. If you've been getting beat up, there's a storm coming against your life and you've been thinking, am I doing something wrong? Well, you probably have. I have. We all have done things wrong. But now it's to do something right. I want you to picture that storm and then picture how big our God is. And I want you to speak to that thing that's trying to get you to give up on your mission. To give up on that call in your life. I'm going to ask you to say these words if you mean them. And I want you to picture Jesus showing us how to do it. He says, follow me. Paul said, follow me as I follow him. Let's do what Jesus did when he was in the midst of a storm. And somebody needed him. Somebody needs you on the other side of this storm. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't run away. Don't quit. That's the devil. Why don't you say this with me? In the name of Jesus, Jesus. peace. Peace. Be still. still. I'm going to fulfill the mission God has given me. People will be blessed. God will be happy. People will be happy. I'll be happy. Satan will be sad. The kingdom of Satan will be sad, but the kingdom of God will be happy. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the storm to cease and every demonic force that's been coming at me, every single one of you, stop in Jesus' name. I resist you, and I receive a blessing and strength from God. Give God a hand clap, will you please?